Hi, and uh, welcome back to a, another video focusing on the uh, Coma Electronic uh, Fuel Kit. Um, in this particular case, as I've been doing in some of the uh, previous videos, I'm taking you beyond um, the fuel kit itself and getting into some uh, other uses or things external to it in terms of uh, some of these creations you see um, laid out here in front of you. So I realized that it's been um, actually a little bit of time since I made my last video. Um, if you recall, I did the uh, video on the bricolage garage where I was talking about repurposing things um, in your household, uh, raiding the dollar store, um, finding things that could make interesting sonic accompaniments to the fuel kit. Um, again, I think what makes the fuel kit very powerful is that you can do a lot with it. It's very small in terms of the form factor and it allows you to expand your focus um, beyond, I guess, any one musical device. Um, I was actually thinking about this today and I will be getting to the fuel kit today showing you the um, envelope follower here with some of these uh, creations and um, the connection to controlling CV, basically doing audio um, to gate um, as an experiment today. But I was thinking about this recently in that um, there's a company out there, I'm not going to mention the company, I actually have a keyboard by this company. They recently came out with a, um, a new workstation. And for me the workstation is an example I think of where our music um, is leaving. Um, you know, the workstation, the idea behind it is that everything is in this one musical box that allows you to create sounds, to create music. And indeed, in some cases, when you had um, some of the Korg, the Yamaha workstations where you could use different styles of synthesis, um, Roland did some stuff with their um, uh, one keyboard line where you could do um, control with um, a light sensor, stuff like this, a distance sensor. You know, those, those were moments, I think, in musical evolution. But with the field kit, with the movement towards modular um, equipment, with the new um, Donna Machines instrument, and if you're on Facebook, I know that in addition to the field kit group, there's now one for um, the um, Donna Machines. There's also one for the new Lyra, which is a, a very interesting electronic instrument in its own right. But the point I'm trying to make here is that as we see the evolution of music, the evolution is happening alongside the gear. Uh, and for me, getting the field kit allowed me to expand my repertoire and to focus on creating essentially new instruments. And I'll show some of these today and in some subsequent videos. Excuse me, what I'll be doing is testing some of these and showing you what I came up with and showing you these successes as well as the failures. If you watch these videos, you know I'm very open and honest about what I'm doing. And again, I say it's all driven by um, the joy to create music and to experiment with sound and to have uh, creative processes out there um, in the world. And it's really interesting, I think, to have the kind of feedback with all of you via social media, via YouTube, Facebook, and so forth. Um, but the field kit reminds me of how we're moving away from that era, if you will, of the workstation. I think what the field kit emphasizes is almost, um, for me, I'd call this, um, for lack of a better term or phrase, um, a sort of agnosticism of gear. What do I mean by this? Well, the point I think we're at today via experiments like the field kit, via modular um, experiments, homemade instruments, um, all the semi-modular stuff coming out, um, effects pedals. If you see the new effects pedals coming out, it seems like weekly. Uh, anytime Nam ro ro rolls around, there's a new effects pedal. If you watch um, Nobs, his gear channel on YouTube, which is great, um, he's always showing these new effects pedals. And literally, you could take, I don't have any gear here that would classify this, but you could take an old SK-1, run it through an effects pedal, and there's a magic to it, right? Because you're, you're altering the sound. And it sort of suggests to us that, really, really, I would say that there is no bad piece of gear or no bad way of using it. The limitation becomes more your creativity, how you interface with the gear, how you create your own patches, if you will. In a sense, you could say any device we um, create or use in a musical sense, including, say, a kalimba, um, what I do with this kalimba, um, how I interface it with the field kit, um, I modify it, you know, I change the keys to uh, new keys, I put in a uh, you know, an input and a piezo mic and so forth. That um, ability to work with essentially something very cheap and minimal and something that you might have lying around your house suggests that we're moving beyond this era where you had to have a lot of money to do sound experiments. I mean, back in the day, a lot of people couldn't afford 
um, the early um, analog synthesizers out there. Now analog is, is much, much cheaper. So I think for me the agnosticism of um, gear suggests that any piece of gear you have can be used. You can run it through an effects pedal, you can run it through the fuel kit, you can use it to, for modification. If you remember those uh, diagrams I showed you in some of those earlier videos, that's really, I think, where we're headed. You can even take um, gear, like take an old SK-1, and you could circuit bend it. I don't have the ability to do that, but many folks on the web do this. You can buy circuit bent toy keyboards on Etsy. You can buy circuit bent Nintendos, whatever. And the point of that is to say, we no longer depend on one box, one workstation to create um, amazing music or great sound experiments. Plus, we're more getting into the era of interfacing things. Um, Bricolage Garage was suggesting to you that you can take, um, you know, saw blades and turn them into kalimbas, you know. And so that's, I think, where we're headed in terms of the world of gear, at least, you know, how I see it. Now, since I... Um, did that video, the Bricolage Garage, I have been busy, as you can maybe see here, creating a lot of different sound experiments or new musical instruments that eventually I can use to interface with um, the field kit. As I mentioned earlier, what's really cool about the field kit is its versatility. You can use it for its LFO. Keep in mind there are seven blocks here. You could use it as a mini mixer. You can use it to adjust the gain. You can do some experiments with the tone. You can do the DC driver stuff, um, the interfacing there. You can do all sorts of interesting stuff with the sensors, and I did that really hour video on sensors, which I realize is kind of long, but some of you uh, wrote that you enjoyed that, so I appreciate hearing that. Um, and then what I'll talk about today is using the envelope follower, the block here on the fuel kit, as a means of interfacing between these um, acoustic instruments into the electrical and then into the CV of the synthesizer here. So we'll get into that in a little bit, but just to show you where I've been or what I've been working on, um, I mentioned the kalimba recently, I, I created this. Um, actually took an old kalimba, took out the old keys, put in new keys, um, and I think it sounds a little bit better to me using these um, jigsaw blades. I also put in a piezo mic, epoxied it inside, and stuck in a um, quarter inch jack. So it's very easy for me to use either in the field kit or into an effects pedal or whatever. I'll do another video in the future about the homemade instruments. So um, keep uh, on the lookout for that. Um, I'm doing some other things. This is um, not done, but it's uh, a series of metal rods and um, one of these ohm synths. And then I also put in an attenuator um, there's a piezo in here for the, the rods. I'm probably going to put a second one in, uh, one of these rods, um, these extensions, which are using a um, grounding terminal for um, electrical circuit boxes. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you some of these in the future because I'm working with um, creating more of these mini kalimbas. But this is kind of cool because I, I got into some um, experiments um, involving uh, conduct, uh, can't say it right now, conduct conductivity, if I can say that, conducting, right? So taking um, these surfaces here and having them interact with these metal rods. And it was kind of just a, a mistake or something I didn't realize was, was happening, but this is not finished. So I will continue to work on that and update you um, when it comes out. Not when it comes out, but when it's ready. These are not being sold or anything like that. Um, the other thing is smaller um, boxes like this. So this is a, um, just, you know, again, putting the, uh, the piezo inside and um, a very simple uh, quarter inch jack. I discovered, by the way, so in some of these videos, um, I was talking about soldering and maybe how I'm not the best soldering pro out there. I'm not a pro. Soldering novice. Um, when I, I was reading some discussion boards and someone said to try rosin solder. Um, I have to say, I, I got some of that off Amazon and it has taken my soldering time and cut it by like a 20th or something crazy. I mean, it's cut it so significantly, it's no longer a pain to do the soldering. So um, I'll talk about that maybe in some future videos where we get into the uh, experiments with creating musical instruments. This is the um, kalimba, uh, another kalimba I started working on. And um, this one, let's see, we can plug it in. We get a ton of feedback, do not uh, blame me because um, you never know. Yeah, it's a little loud. Let's see here. 
Anyway, um, some of these will sound better with effects, but I saw someone online again using the um, grounding bars and um, it's a very cool effect using just these cheap um, skewers for Asian foods, Japanese foods. And so it's, it's a pretty cool way, I think, to take advantage of, again, some of the stuff around your house. I took a craft box, drilled a hole in it, um, one piezo and um, a quarter inch jack, and uh, that's about it. So you can kind of see here just what, um, sorry, that was loud. Um, but yeah, you can you can see just, you know, the potential for some of these instruments. And um, this is one of those, um, this is not finished. I obviously will cut this and um, use an app to tune uh, the keys. Another one that's not done is um, this one here, and this is going to be very similar to this, um, what I call the uh, metal forest. So this one will have um, mostly, I think, guitar strings, but also some rods. Um, there are a couple piezos in there. I'm not going to take the box apart. It's just kind of a pain to get it apart. It has, a um, um, again, another um, output for the um, quarter inch, and then I put in a, a three-way toggle switch. Um, to experiment with using two, and I have the, I, I got from China the big 50 millimeter piezos. The ones on Amazon are like 27 or 31. And Simone the Magpie was talking about using bigger ones in his experiments. And so I wanted to try that as well. And I put in the three way toggle to see um, how it would sound in terms of maybe making the array of the um, different. Um, sorry, rods and guitar strings and see how that would sound toggling between the two. So a lot of these are experiments in the sense of it doesn't cost you very much. Some of this you could literally make an instrument for five to ten bucks depending on your supplies, your level of being handy or whatever. So it, it's relatively cheap to make a lot of this stuff. Um, and then the, um, sorry, something just fell there. Um, the um, toy piano uh, I modded this very simply, put a piezo in, and then um, put a jack here. A uh, see if the camera gets around there. A quarter uh, inch jack output right there, and I'll get to this in a little bit. As far as um, we'll we'll use this for our experiment, I think today to look at using the envelope faller, which is kind of the point of this video. But I wanted to start off with these instruments because it's been a um, a bit of a gap in the video since the last video I've made and I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you what I've been up to and where I'm, I'm going. And then lastly is this, I just finished it today with my contact um, cement and epoxy, so it's very new. But this is basically a um, what I'm calling the metal forest. It's really busy, I had no idea I was going to put so many of these objects on here. Um, has a, a piezo and a um, quarter output. Again, um, I bought some a series of boxes, including this one, gear boxes, effects pedal boxes, from Mammoth Electronics. You can get these, though, anywhere on Amazon. You can get them painted ahead of time. You could paint them yourself. You could do designs on them, whatever you want to do. And so this will be, in a future video, I'll use this to interface um, with the field kit. So uh, be on the lookout for that. I'll hopefully do that in a few weeks. Okay, so I thought what I'd do now is um, take you through just very simply um, the envelope follower. If you're interested in looking more at what the envelope follower does, I won't explain it all. Um, look at the 50 ways to use the field kit. Uh, specifically, you'll find it on page 22. And the explanation there is, is good and it describes um, things like um, the signal, the impedance, and so forth. And stuff that is typically, since I'm not an electronics guy, beyond my level of expertise, so you can um, look at that on your own. I'm just going to show you the, the sonic function of this today. Um, and we can look at it in a few different ways. So first off, I would take, or I could recommend that you would take, um, let me just see, we'll plug this in. I guess it's plugged in already. Um, let's just use the uh, piezo that came with the um, expansion kit. And I thought what we would do here is just show you how simple this, I guess what I call a patch is. And by the way, um, I not only use this to these sticks to create kalimbas, but I also use them for uh, drumsticks. Because when you create um, some of these sonic experiments using the piezos, 
uh, particularly with the gain function here, right, you don't need a lot of banging on the instruments. You probably, like using rubber mallets um, on a lot of this stuff is going to be overkill, probably. So, um, and I will show you, by the way, in a future video, this um, music concrete box, and that one will be my first uh, full-fledged um, musical experiment using one of these homemade devices. So look out for that one soon. So in any case, um, this is very simple to create. So what you're going to do is, um, you can see this on the camera, you're basically just going to take um, whatever, you're, whatever you want to affect. The, what we're going to do here is we're going to take our audio. Essentially, I wanted to do audio to gate. That's very simple. So I want to take an audio source, um, electroacoustically um, you know, modify it or not modify it, electroacoustically um, interact with it, basically, and then use that sound to control the um, CV input on the synthesizer. This is Michael Rucci's um, work. It, he does great synthesizers. Um, this is a very simple six oscillator with um, CV, which makes it really key. There are a few other drone synths out there you can get, um, but his has the CV input, and that makes it very interesting to use in these sorts of um, sonic experiments. He also, by the way, makes, um, if you didn't have the field kit, if you're watching this video, you probably have it, but he makes for like Let's say between thirty and fifty dollars. I forget the price. And he's on Etsy and some other. He uh, has his own website too. Does really phenomenal stuff. But he has a um, little box, um, probably about this big actually, and it does exactly what we're doing today with the envelope follower. It's basically audio to gate, and it's kind of cool. So if you didn't have this, the field kit, you could do it that way. But we're going to do it using the field kit because that's why you're watching these videos. You're a part of the uh, the groups and the interest that's. Uh, growing out there with Coma Electronic and their really cool device here. So this is a very simple patch. All we have to do is plug something into our channel. In this case I'm using input 1 and I'm not going to make sure when I turn this up to not be too loud here. It doesn't take much, right? So, Okay, so that is, let's turn down the, uh, the gain a little bit. So you know this trick by using the 50 ways to use the field kit. Um, there are many patches in there that um, use this particular technique, you engage the auxiliary button and you take then the auxiliary out. And keep in mind you can adjust the auxiliary volume. I just have it at uh, 12 o'clock, but in a lot of these cases, like with the sensor video I mentioned, if something doesn't work, if you're not getting that response, the interaction you want, you desire, tweak the knobs a little bit. I mean, the best way to experiment really. It's not rocket science. You just, you know, move the attenuator up or down and um, or left or right, I guess, would be more accurate, and then see what you get. So that is the auxiliary out is going into the signal in. Again, we're using the envelope follower block. And then I'm taking whatever I want to modify uh, here, this chord, into my CV synth um, in the um, envelope um, out. Now, the manual mentions you could use the envelope out or the gate out. And again, use the control, the attenuator, to adjust um, the signal that you're getting if you're not getting a response on the other end, whatever that other end is. Um, so I have it coming out of the envelope follower. You can also try the, the gate out. And the 50 ways to use field guides suggest try both. Try one, try the other if one doesn't work. And of course, some of this I think um, is you're really doing fine tuning when you're when you're working with, with some of the stuff, right? So it's just for you to experiment and to try out. So let's see what happens here. Um, if everything is set up, we will maybe be a go.
Okay, sorry, it's taking a second. I didn't want you to have to hear all the staticky stuff. So what I did was I turned the master volume down. Um, basically, I'm just going to tap on the uh, piezo, and you're already hearing this. What it's doing then is controlling the um, gate on the synthesizer. So you'll just hear these little squelches. And so, you know, that is not spectacular or anything like that, right? But again, it's allowing me to take a percussive hit on the piezo and translate that into an audio effect here in time, right? Seems like very little latency when that's doing it. So anyway, that is... Again, sonically not interesting, but we're, we're getting into here the, um, the effect, right, of being able to take an acoustic instrument and use that to control something electronic, in this case a synthesizer. And you could do this with any piece of gear you have that has um, a CV input, so it's a pretty amazing opportunity. Uh, we can try it with some other instruments. Doing this on the fly, so we'll see if... Uh, if it's interesting or not, let's see here, the kalimba. Okay, so we'll try it with the kalimba. Um, it turns out that little bit, you're hearing a little bit of a, a hum. Um, we'll engage the auxiliary channel again here, fourth channel three, which is where I have the kalimba plugged in. Let's see what happens. Turn that down a little bit. Okay, so it's kind of noisy. I think I just have the tuning of these oscillators. Um, I thought I had most of them kind of higher frequency, but so you see another example then of just taking um, an instrument, acoustic, translating that into an electronic um, signal to control our synthesizer. You could do this with your, um, your uh, driver as well. I'm trying to think of the best way to uh, do this. Um, probably the best way, let's see here, we'll just take our sonic, our metal forest, and I wasn't planning on using this, but let's give it a shot, and let's plug in the driver, the motor, and we'll just uh, use it to, again, create something interactive and let's see before we do it maybe I'll, I'll let me disengage the auxiliary and then let's just hear you know the sound without it um, without the synthesizer rolling let's see Okay, so that's just the piezo that's inside the Sonic Forest. I'm looking at this. So this is, um, I don't know if you're in the Dremel stuff like I am, but this is a little bit, and it's uh, or a little sanding thing. I just I don't want to sand my instrument. But I find that the Dremel um, soft disks and stuff can be used very effectively for um, some of the Sonic things you might be doing with uh, the DC driver module here on the field kit. So that's just the sound. So, okay, let's engage auxiliary and we'll hear the squelches from the synthesizer. Now, 
Okay, so what's happening? There we go. Okay, it just, the, of course, the piezo, right, is not a perfect microphone. If you uh, read about piezo mics on the internet, you know, they work through vibration, not through um, other microphones like our, our lavalier here that is um, working through air. So um, in this case, I guess it wasn't picking up. So let's move closer. I think the microphone's dead center. Let's try that. Okay, so we're getting... And I don't know if you can pick this up on the camera, but anytime, right, it triggers the synthesizer, you're seeing that light indicating that it's being triggered. Okay, you get the idea. So again, what I'm doing here is not musically interesting, but that's not the point right now. The point is to talk about what I've stressed in some other videos. How can we use our environment around us to interact with various gear. So in this case, we're going from the acoustic gear into um, the electronic gear. And that's kind of the point of, of this particular video. One last one we can try, maybe, um, is the uh, toy piano, if I can find the end of the chord. So this again was just a pretty simple modification. It was not um, rocket science to do this, which is always good. If you're like me, you want to do the sonic stuff. You don't want to spend maybe a lot of time um, building stuff. Although I have to say, getting into creating these instruments has been a total blast and a lot of challenges, even thinking about like what metals to use in the case of this device here, how to get stuff affixed to it, um, dr even drilling the right size holes. Now, if, you, if you're good with tools and stuff, then none of that maybe applies but it, it does apply to me so for me it's it's always been a challenge and kind of makes it more fun i think to create um, some of these instruments so um let's look at then the toy piano and i think let's just see if we're getting you know what we're getting getting some hum okay yeah i think just my um i hope it's not my jack i think it's just the adapter i'm using on this this cable so i don't know um if you've discovered this, but it's a good idea if you have the field kit to get a lot of these guys, the um, quarter to eighth inch. Um, all of the inputs and outputs on the Coma are eighth inch, and that's great for size factor, right? You wouldn't want quarter inch. Um, depending on what you're using, um, I'm using a lot of quarter outputs for these instruments I've created, but of course your gear varies if you're modular set up, um, you know, using some other instruments. You might be using a lot of um, eighth inch to eighth inch. So in any case, so we have some sound here. We can do it. Let's try it first, just the piezo inside here, and then we'll move to, um, um, we'll try the piezo inside here, and then we'll um, again move to engaging channel three auxiliary to hear the effect on the synthesizer. So. And you gotta love the uh, sound of the toy piano. This is a, um, a Schoen Hut, which is kind of famous. You see these all over Amazon. People mod these and everything. And um, maybe I'll show you in a, in a subsequent video, but if you know about the toy piano, it's actually a percussive device, just like um, the real piano. Um, and there are avant-garde artists out there who've used toy pianos in incredible albums and compositions. But basically you're striking a key that hits um, a soundboard that has rods, not on metal rods, not unlike some of these, and they're all of a different length, thus giving you the tuning. Of course, the tuning is not perfect, which I think for sonic experiments, for doing some of the stuff that maybe some of you and I do, it's ideal because you don't want something that sounds amazing. And that's kind of one of the points. And if you look at people that do amazing uh, Hauschka and those uh, individuals who do pre prepared piano stuff, they're taking the pre prepared piano to a, an entirely new and amazing avant-garde sonic level. So let's do this. Let's engage channel three auxiliary and we'll hear the effect. We'll hear, hear the squelches again on the synthesizer. Okay, so essentially what you're hearing there is um, some of the uh, you're essentially hearing what squelches from uh, the synthesizer 
And of course, these are not going to be pitched the same, right? You're not going to get, um, you know, the same pitch you're playing on that instrument. But the whole point is, how can you use it to interact with, in this case, your electronic gear via the acoustic gear that you are playing through the air um, in, in some way, percussive or, or otherwise. Okay, so I decided, um, let's look at one more sonic experiment here using the envelope follower. And again, this is not finished, but I thought I could use the synthesizer part of this to show you um, synthesizer sound, electronic sound, modifying electronic sound via the CV. So we'll stick a battery in here. Um, what this is, is uh, you see these on Amazon and you can get them really cheap, like well over, under 20 bucks. And what it is, is um, six pads that um, are touch sensitive and then it creates a synthesizer sound. And um, it's not high quality, but again, a lot of the sonic experiments we're interested in probably shouldn't be high quality. That's part of the fun. Um, I won't get into the um, conductive stuff I was talking about earlier, but basically it has a built-in speaker, which is not worth much if you have one of these um, you know what I'm talking about so I thought what we do is go back to channel 3 input for our sound and I want to make sure I don't blast your ears off here but um, I'll just give you the the sound of the synthesizer and then we'll use it via the envelope follower to again affect the other synth here with the CV input I think we're getting let's see I'm hearing from the speaker. Let's raise this. Okay. How's our level? I guess we're okay still. All right. You get different effects. You basically have to hold down the um, middle of the six pads. And you can hold different ones and have different effects. So anyway, that's the raw sound. Let's engage auxiliary to uh, see how it um, affects our CV synth here. Okay, so if you're listening, um, make sure I get this right, but left or right ear, I think, yeah, the right ear should be this um, synth. So you can kind of distinguish between the two because when I recorded this in the um, Zoom, I just put um, the field kit um, piezo outs and the other outputs into the left ear. So I think that's right. If it isn't, you know, one ear is the CB synth, the other is the ohm synth. So you can kind of distinguish between the sound, I guess, if you want to do that. Wow, okay, so um, I don't know what you think of that, but I'd probably make a video just doing that for like an hour and I'd be pretty happy putting that through some reverb. Um, what it was doing there was actually, um, you know, the, the interactivity I think was the greatest of all the experiments we did today. There wasn't much with the um, toy piano. And again, some of that could be because we're getting a pure signal, right, coming right out of an audio input into the input here, using that on the auxiliary um, bus to affect the CV that's coming out um, for the envelope follower, um, we're getting a pure signal, whereas with a lot of these uh, piezo devices I've been working with, um, there is, of course, um, 
I'm going to say latency, right? But but you know, in terms of the effect that you're having here and how that's triggering something here, um, it's just not maybe as profound or as great as using the pure signal. So to me, that was like much uh, more interesting. And you could see if you layered some of that, you could have some really fat sounds. And that's, I think, one of the great advantages of using the envelope follower here, in this case, to trigger um, the uh, gate in on the uh, synthesizer here. So um, a lot to think about, I think, just in terms of um, sonic experiments. Hopefully you'll continue your um, sonic experiments with the field kit, with devices, creating your own instruments, whatever you, you happen to be doing. And uh, I will, in future videos, um, feature for you some of these instruments that I've been working on recently and get into some more of the uh, ways in which we can interact using all of the uh, various um, uh, modules here on the uh, Coma Electronic Field Kit. So stay tuned for additional videos and good luck with your own sonic experiments with the Field Kit and beyond. <laughs>